Hi, this is Kishore. Welcome to Naresh IT. And today we are going to discuss about uh, object oriented programming in C. Okay. Today our topic is what is called object oriented programming. Okay. Before going to discuss about object oriented concept, uh, we have to discuss about something that is nothing but what is procedure oriented or what is called function oriented programming structure okay because of c++ okay here we are using c++ c++ means here plus plus indicates what extension of c language that means whenever we are going to work with c++ first of all we have to know about c and what are the advantages what are the problems we are facing in c and how they are solved in c++ because of c++ is the extract of a c language that is why first of all I am going to cover what is called function oriented programming language what are the assets of function oriented programming language and what are the drawbacks of function oriented and how they are covered in object oriented programming okay now first of all take a look c is called function oriented programming language now what is called function oriented programming language in a function oriented programming language the total program is divided into small pieces called sub programs or sub routines which are technically called functions okay due to this advantage is what okay let us see I am going to start small program for this suppose just assume it is a C program which is having nearly 100 lines okay now it is a C program and it contains 100 lines okay after compilation there is a issue it is going to show some error now here how many lines is it is having 100 lines actually the program contains 100 lines and it is now showing error and uh, the line number is not displaying means error line number is not displaying now we have to check uh, 100 lines for the error now it is going to take more time okay it is going to take more time not only that one suppose i want to execute only 10 lines of this program actually the 10 lines are not separated right now it is a single program that is why to execute the 10 lines I have to execute the total program due to this program size is increased means more weight when program is uh, big automatically performance is reduced that is why what I am doing here is I am going to divide this 100 lines program into several pieces okay suppose here 20 lines here 20 lines here 20 here 20 here 20 now what happened a big program is divided into number of small pieces which are called sub programs or sub routines and technically they are called functions now what happens say this suppose this program is giving one error now how many lines i have to check means only 20 lines Okay, I have not to check the remaining 80 lines that is why errors are easily identified. Next when program is small it takes low memory when memory is less performance is increased it is the advantage of uh, okay, dividing a program into number of pieces and these pieces are called what functions these pieces are called functions that is why a function is a small program which is used to do a particular task for example we know that in c language we are using printf especially printf is designed to perform printing operations okay printf is designed to perform printing operations and where as well as scanf is there scanf is used to perform input output operation input operations and clr scr is there which is used to clear the screen content that means every function is having a particular task 
Now, the say function is a small program which is used to do a particular task. Now, the entire C program is collection of functions that is why C is called function oriented programming language. With this advantage is what? First one easy to identify the errors and when program is small okay, performance is increased and the major advantage function is right ones use many times. That means what? Which is also called reusability, which is also called reusability. Okay. Very simple concept. Actually, printf function is there. It is designed by Dennis Ritchie and how many times he have been designed? Only one time, but as a user we are able to use any number of times. That is why it is called reusability means right ones use many times concept. It is the major motivating factor of functions. Now, what is the problem with function? Okay. Just before we have finished what are the advantages with function? Now, the topic is what is the problem with a function? Okay. What are the problems we are facing with functions? Okay. I am going to explain one small thing. Okay. Suppose, just assume there is a main function. This main function is divided into suppose three small functions. Okay. Now, see this main is the function and that function contains three sub programs that is why here it is the sum code, it is the product code and it is the division code. Okay. Now, sum contains its local body. Now, here these small programs are called sub programs. Now, they are called sub programs. That is why C program is collection of sub programs which are also called functions. That is why C is called function oriented programming language. Now, what is the problem with the sub program? Suppose, I have declared a comma b before the main function. Generally, whenever the variables are declared at the top of the program, they are called global variables. Okay. Whenever the variables are declared at the top of the program, they are called global variables. Okay. When a variable is global, it is accessed by all the functions in that program. Okay. Here watch it carefully. We are having two types of variables, local variables, global variables. Now, global variables are declared at the top of the program and they can be accessed from anywhere in our program. That means, now this A and B can be accessed with sum function as well as product function as well as division function. That means, now these variables are freely moving, these variables are freely moving around the functions. Okay. And now, the point is when it is a big program, suppose there is a project work which contains thousands of lines. Now, it is very difficult to, to find out which variable is used by which function. That means, when several variables, several functions are declared, okay, it is very critical to identify which variable is accessed by which function. Okay. That is why here the main problem is when data is global, any function can access it. That means, that data is not secured, means not protected. Okay. Now, here when the data is global, it is not protected and it can be accessed by or accessed with any function in our program. That is why here the data is freely moving, the data is freely moving around the functions. That is why the data is not protected. Okay. Now, I want to make secure applications. That means, I want to okay, make restrict the data. That is why the concept of object 
oriented programming is introduced ok. To avoid this problem to make data more secure to design secured applications by the programmer the concept of object oriented programming is introduced. Now, in object oriented what happening see this here program is divided into functions ok and here also variables are there in object oriented also program is divided into functions and objects, but uh, there they are binding data and functions together into a single unit called object it is the major difference. Here functions are different data is different means in C programming language in C programming language data is separately stored and functions are separately stored and all the functions are having access on global data and when it is private variable only that function can access ok see this here suppose I have declared a local variable now it is accessible with only some function when it is declared inside the product only product can but I want to make some functions ok some function for example A and B now A and B is accessed by some product to division that means all the functions can access but I want to prevent uh, the division to access the A and B that is why I am going to create a object like this in object what happening inside the object I am placing A comma B. Now observe carefully here in previous example we are using functions but this time we are using objects in object oriented happening what happening variables and functions together are placed into a single unit called object ok. For example, there is in a class several students are there for example, I am giving simple example for this in a class several students are there and every student is having own data for example, generally student is having id number, name, fees, course for example, these are the details. Now watch it here id number, name, fees, course every student is having same data ok, but one student data does not belong to another that means one student paid the fees. Now this fees belongs to only this student not for other students no? that is why but other students also have to pay the fee no? that is why they have to maintain another fees, another name, another id, another course that is why here what I am doing see this. Now it is the data or data members generally we know variables to access these variables I am going to write uh, one function also. Now watch it here they are nothing but uh, variables and here it is a function and now it is student 1 later I am going to create student 2 now watch it here also student 2 is having id as well as name and fee and course ok. Now here also one function is there and here the most important factor this function is able to access only this id this name this fee and course and this function is able to access this one that means the data is separated into number of blocks called object 1 object 2. Now one object it is the first object it contains first student data only it is a second student object like this the total program is divided into that is why C++ programming is called object oriented programming structure that is why in C language what happening the program is divided into several functions that is why that one is called function oriented ok. Here the total program is divided into several objects each object contains its local data and related functions or associated functions ok and now here we can store one student data here we can store another student data nowadays everything is object oriented even though suppose you are going for a supermarket ok for example you are going to a supermarket there after buying the items we are getting a bill 
Okay. Just watch that bill how it is represented. Suppose it is the bill. Suppose there is a big bazaar. Now, here something headings are there. Here they are going to give the bill like this item, quantity, price, and amount. Now, what happens? This? Suppose it is A item and quantity 10, price 10, amount automatically 100. B item, suppose 10, 20, 200. Next, C item 1, only 100 rupees, now 100. Now, they are giving 400 total at last. Here, just observe this. This one belongs to, this row belongs to A object, means uh, this object contains this one is nothing but one object and this object contains a item details only. Now, they are a item particulars and this one contains b item particulars, this one contains c item particulars. Now, it is nothing but object 1, object 2, object 3. Now, it is called object oriented that is why nowadays everything is object oriented that is why object oriented become very popular. Now, C++ uh, supports the concept of object oriented. Okay. It is nothing but uh, what is called object oriented. Now, in object oriented the main thing is what? Functions and data both are linked with one another means uh, outers are not allowed, outers are not allowed that is which is nothing but uh, data hiding concept which is nothing but data hiding. That means, what one object data is accessed only with the member functions of same class or object. Okay. Suppose, here object is having variables now, now these variables are accessed only with the member functions or operations associated with that object means outers are not allowed and this object data is accessed only with this object member functions. That is why here data is secured and it is not visible outside and this concept is called data hiding. And now, we have to discuss. Now, just I have finished what is object oriented. Now, what are the object oriented features introduced in C++? In object oriented features, the first one is class object inheritance polymorphism. Okay. We are having several concepts. In next session, I am going to give the object oriented features. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.